Okay, let's talk about shoulder pain after throwing something. Uh, now, obviously, this is going to be a little different in people who repeatedly throw versus kind of the weekend warrior throw. But either way, let we're this video specifically for front of the shoulder discomfort and a couple other options of what all could be going on. So let's first add on. Here we go. So the biceps. So biceps tendon. Obviously, we all are familiar with the main bicep muscle. There's a few. The long head of the biceps comes all the way up into the shoulder capsule. I don't have the capsule on at the moment, just so you can see where it comes up and over and it actually attaches onto this top part of the glenoid fossa. Now, technically, if it was added, you, your labrum is right here on this outside. It just deepens the socket. Think of kind of like if this is a golf ball on a golf tee, it's deepening the tee. So if we add a little bit more of the connective tissue, you'll see this is the capsule. So it comes in, the capsule itself, well, this is more the tenovial sheath on here, but the capsule itself comes all the way and extends and all of these ligaments um, and tendons attach into it and it helps form the capsule. So this is a rotator cuff muscle, rotator cuff muscle, and their tendons come in and they also attach to the capsule. And we'll go on the back side. So when people hear rotator cuff, sometimes they're not really sure what all that means. This is your supraspinatus. This is your infraspinatus. This is your teres minor. Those all three on the back side help rotate the arm out and the supraspinatus helps initiate lifting your arm up. And then on the front side is subscap, subscapularis. It internally rotates your arm. Now all of these have a certain function as I've gone over in a couple other videos on here that you can find, but in a quick recap, when these are not firing appropriately, particularly infraspinatus and teres minor, as that arm goes overhead, instead of them pulling this humerus down to help clear this space right here, it actually rides just a little bit higher and things will get pinched and irritated. So I wanna specifically talk about this biceps tendon for a second. So when you go up overhead into a throwing motion, it puts a direct line of pull on here as it rotates back. Sometimes it can yank on, let me take off that capsule layer. Sometimes it can yank on labrum, give you a little bit of labrum fraying. People who've played sports, anyone that's athletic, um, there are studies out there where they've, they've shown that if you were to MRI the entire population, 70% of people that have had any kind of athletics, they would show some form of wear and tear on their labrum. Um, and can be totally non-symptomatic. So don't worry about that unless you have a ton of popping and clicking and catching. Um, generally, labral tears <clears throat> or fraying or anything like that will get resolved with conservative care. But that's when you hear a slap lesion. It's a superior lesion, anterior to posterior is what that really means. It just means pulling um, that has caused a tear on the labrum. But like I said, if you don't have a lot of clicking, popping, catching, if it's just some tenderness and tension when you're reaching behind you or going into that throwing position, sometimes this tendon can just get inflamed and irritated and cause you a little discomfort. Now, let's add on even more. So obviously we've got our deltoid, we've got the pec and everything here. I want to keep this off because I want to add on the nerves. So anything that's yellow here is going to be nerve. And as you can see, obviously there is a ton of nerves that come down and they cross in the front of the shoulder. They go down the arm. There is nerves. Let me zoom out just a bit. They come and they innervate all around the shoulder. Now there's a couple that I want to definitely point out in regards to kind of misdiagnosis. We just talked about that biceps tendon in the front. Sometimes we'll use we biceps tendonitis other places that sometimes are misdiagnosed. So if we take off these layers and we see this nerve right down here, this is your suprascapular nerve. So as you can see, it comes from the neck, comes down, there is a throw ligament on here. There we go. So there is a ligament that it goes underneath and then it also, if you can see, has to make its way under this crowded area as well. Because if you remember, I just took off all those rotator cuff muscles and it sits underneath. This is the capsule, by the way. I've fully added it on. 
So if you keep in mind this suprascapular nerve, what it does is it does motor function to the rotator cuff and it does sensation to the actual ball and socket and the AC joint. So if there's any irritation in general, so let me add back on our rotator cuff that sits on top of it and it all feeds right into this capsule here. If that rotator cuff is not getting enough motor function signaling basically to fire as efficiently as it should, you can get a little bit more of that decreased space here and get things more irritable. Um, the other interesting thing is when I go and I am working on people, the referral pattern for infraspinatus, this muscle here, and for pushing on that suprascapular nerve sends it straight to the front of the arm and it feels like bicep. It will give a deep ache right here on the bicep and go straight down. So I always check the backside to see, hey, does that reproduce your symptom? Or does it only reproduce your symptom if I'm touching right here? So things to keep in mind. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these other nerves, but ones to be aware of are the three main ones that go down the arm, the median, the radio, and the ulnar. When I am testing to see about shoulder pain, I'm always testing the major nerves, so I'm going to take off some of these smaller ones. Usually the smaller ones that you see disappear here, those are sensory nerves. They do like skin innervation. But let's look at these guys We're right here. Okay, this is your median nerve probably the most common one people are aware of. It crosses in the front, comes down right here, kind of on the medial side of your elbow, but it goes straight down the middle, and that's what you tend to hear get irritated in carpal tunnel. goes straight through the front of the wrist. If we look at this one, this is called your ulnar nerve. So it comes down, kind of goes deep to your tricep. It is your funny bone nerve, so it comes right on the back inner side of your elbow, and then comes down the middle side to your pinky and ring finger area. And then the other one, let's click on it, is your radial nerve. So the radial nerve, oops, sorry, tipping my guy all over here. Sometimes it's a little easier to see it from different angles. Let me take a couple of these muscles off. So it comes down, it actually exits through part of the rotator cuff comes deep underneath your tricep and then it comes forward and goes right into the forearm muscle here and then goes all the way down towards your thumb. So I always screen those three, not because I always think people have nerve damage per se, but whenever there's muscle irritation, inflammation, they get sticky, right? It's kind of like spaghetti without any olive oil. And when they are sticky and you go move your arm, you tend to feel them quite a bit. So I always do nerve glides to make sure these are moving. If you can see right here when I said it comes through rotator cuff, that is your axillary nerve, but it feeds into the radial nerve. So always want to take those into account. Always want to make sure that we are not just black and white on one thing when the body is very complex and moves all together. But in general, we're going to look at it as a dynamic whole. So hopefully that gives a good overview of what can happen, what to screen, and where to go from there. Now, obviously, there's some special testing to do in person, but that is a general overview.